<laughs> okay, thanks for coming to the Historical Society today. And uh, please bear with us because this is our first in a se hopefully a series of chats uh, that we're going to have for the 100th anniversary, the centennial of uh, Long Beach, which is all year. So we hope to have one a month, and we kind of thought we'd break it down into, you know, like maybe police one month, firemen one month, lifeguards one month, and, and get some of our long time, really long time residents, I am one, from, um, you know, in the different uh, categories, okay? So we hope you, you know, you'll come and uh, enjoy. All right, um, what else did we want to say? You go ahead. Okay, well tonight is merchants, and we'll introduce them, but uh, those of you who don't know us, I'm Karen Adamo, president, Jeannie Brown, co uh, we're co-presidents, and I want to introduce my the board that's here tonight. Um, we have, wait, I can't see what this one Okay, you have okay. Diane Sadat, raise your hand, Diane. Diane. Okay, and Jim Kirkland. Naomi Feller. We have um, Dave, Barbara, Barbara uh, Flack. Flack is the vice president, her husband Dave. Um, Grant Guidel oh, behind is this gentleman. Oh, I can't see Grant. Phyllis yes. Ginsburg is our garden <clears throat> committee and helps with grants and archives. We have Eileen Polis here tonight from the library. And thank you, thank you, thank you for coming last minute to film. And the, and the film And we had makers. a student from uh, Mr. Carvey's class at the high school, Scott. Right, Scott yeah. Perez? Okay, yeah. thank you for Great. coming also last minute. We have Dennis Carey here who just wrote a book, The Silver Strand. Is that the More, whole title? No, it's a, What's the whole title, Dennis? Silver Strand, The Long Beach Saga. That's right. Oh, nice. And he yeah. will be presenting his book and a presentation May 1 here and a book signing. So don't miss that. It sounds like a fabulous book. If we have time, Dennis will, can tell you a little about it. Um, okay, so tonight we have, and thank you again for coming. I really appreciate it. This is uh, Jean Ziegler. Hi. Dale Schmorak. Am I saying that correctly? Smart. Smart. <laughs> Barry Koff from Sea Town Stores. Sure. And Fred Ostendorf from Ostendorf and Stein Builders. So we're very thrilled to have you here. Did we miss anybody? No. No, no. But we're calling this, we're calling it the Reminiscing Series. And so as Jeannie said, once a month we're going to have different groups here to talk about the history of Long Beach. And just going to mention somebody who brought this. You brought this, right, Dale? No, no. Oh, oh, bags by Mimi. Oh, wow. I remember that. Oh, wait, that's, what you, that's a relative of mine. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, really? Yes. We're, we're all related. No, no, because <laughs> we're all Susie, related. Susie was married to uh, Jay Davis, who was Echo. Echo. Right. Oh, oh, right. right. Oh, They're now okay. divorced, but they were married. Oh, cool. <laughs> all right. And, uh, I did, wait, oh, okay. we can't do this. We just wanted to say the format, I'm sorry, okay, yeah. is going to be each speaker will speak for about 15 to 20 minutes, all right? About their family, about the business, about uh, just long, long experience and whatever. who you're connected to. However, <laughs> we have to hold our comments because absolutely every time somebody talks, you're going to go, I knew them, I knew them. So uh, we're asking you to just, you know, hold those comments and then later on, hopefully at the end, we'll have time. <laughs> Right, and we can ask some questions. And, yes. and just that you purchase the microphone for your next <clears throat> program. Oh, yes, I think we do. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, we're not loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've got our age group. I'm, I'm the oldest of six, I can get louder. <laughs> okay, so Jean, would you begin? Would you like to begin? Okay. Would you begin? I will. Okay. okay. Donate one. As I was introduced, <laughs> my name is Jane Ziggler, and I did own a restaurant some years ago, and I'll try to keep the year as secret as I possibly can, <laughs> <laughs> so you won't begin to guess my age. <laughs> with that, I'm asking you to please bear with me, because it has been some time since I was the owner of Paramar Restaurant, so I had to make some notes. If I make mistakes, it's not my age, I'm just suffering from some other illness. <laughs> we won't know. Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to dig deep. Uh, I, my friend uh, Karen called me maybe two years ago, I mean two weeks ago. I was going through some things and I just made some quick notes. So if there's going to be time for Q&A, feel free to ask those questions because it may resonate some memory that I have. But anyway, uh, my restaurant was Paramount Restaurant. It was located on the 100 block West Park Avenue and Magnolia Boulevard. A clearer idea, uh, location for you may be, uh, are you aware of where the senior building is, 225 West Park Avenue? It was literally there in the parking lot. Uh, uh, yeah, it was there, oh, and yeah. yeah, if you remember, there was a school across the street on the Magnolia right. Boulevard. Yes. I was there at, during that time. So that was, and I approximated the, the date, and that was from about 1968 to I think I sold Venice in 1979. Hmm. And that was not by choice, that was either living or dying. So I chose to live, so I sold the Venice. I didn't get a laugh out of that. <laughs> <laughs> we took it very seriously. <laughs> it was a matter of work. Well, it's, it, like any other business uh, owners, regardless of what type of business, for a while, being self-employed has its advantages and its disadvantages. Uh, one of my main disadvantages was that I had never, ever took a course. I, have never, I had never worked in a restaurant. I never owned a restaurant, so I came in completely blind, but we turned with determination that now since I had invested my money, this is going to work. So I was there for about 10 or 12 years, and I'm very uh, blessed that it did work. And the reason it did work is because of uh, my location, and I'm sure most of you know, when you're going into business, one of the main uh, suggestions is location, location, location. And I was in a very unique location because I had customers from the school, the teachers, and of course the students and their family. I also had um, the opportunity to have uh, quite a few people that was working on Long Island Railroad because I was so close in the distance. And I was selling, or my menu was somewhat different than the typical menu in Long Beach at that time. I sold fried chicken, I sold barbecue ribs, mm -hmm. and I sold uh, uh, all kinds of food. We just didn't stick with one mm -hmm. menu. We had roast beef, we had all of those. And I'm very proud to say that we have a clientele that consists of a multitude of people. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, again, I was there for about 10 years. Um, and I had absolutely no business experience. And at that time, I was back in school and college, so I'm trying to do the restaurant and to also go to school. And that did pan out very well for me. Uh, we talked about the food, that the type of food that I served. Um, one of the things uh, that was really beneficial to me at that time uh, the togetherness of people that came and uh, supported us, and also it was a family uh, concept <coughs> uh, where different types of people gathered and sit down and enjoyed the meal um, and met other families. So it became a cohesive in comparison to what we have today, and that I'm very, very proud of. I also was very successful and sponsoring a female uh, softball team, which uh, we played. There may be some of the players that belong to the West End uh, softball team women, because you beat us, so it would be more. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a really, really great time. We mm -hmm. made many friends. And again, I did create and sponsor by my restaurant, from my restaurant, a girl team that traveled throughout Nassau County and became well known. And also, uh, they they were fortunate enough to meet a lot of families and friends that they still have. Um, that's pretty much it. As I said, I my menu was very um, extensive. I guess we could call it. Uh, there are different types of. I didn't realize this at the time. 
different types of restaurants, and mine was a combination of what we call casual, uh, and also it was, um, uh, it was another type, a mixed. And that simply means that with the casual, you could sit and eat, or you could, uh, and, and or you could uh, serve, stand at, sit at the counter and be served. So it was kind of like it was not really a a very sophisticated restaurant, but it was very very pleasant at that time. At that time, uh, and again, we did serve a variety of food, and uh, I was very fortunate because my cook, and some of you might know him. He was, at that time, a top chef in Long Beach, and we called him uh, John. Do you remember that? Long John? Anybody remember that name? Mm -hmm. But he was excellent at anything that he cooked, especially his roast beef. I mean, we had people coming from out of town just to eat his roast oh. beef. So um, we ended up being very successful, I must agree, I must admit. Uh, it was a challenge, and I think when my co-speakers here would say if they've been in Venice, uh, going into Venice is a challenge, and uh, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, I remember not even going home at night, staying in the bank and doing my accounting to pass it on to my CPA, but it does pay off. Um, I think that's about it. It's certainly not, and again, I don't remember a lot of things that did take place, but that's a general idea of what I did experience. Uh, for me to, and let me just back up, I'm originally from Alabama. I came here when I was 18 years old. Uh, so for me to, and I usually don't, Karen, tell you, I usually don't pop my own horn. <laughs> but uh, it, you know, at times I do. For me to come uh, with no education in the restaurant business at all, uh, no mentor. You know, I was kind of winging it right through. Uh, I'm very pleased with my success, and I'm even more pleased to be a part of Long Beach because it has changed since I was here. But I still feel that I'm very fortunate to be a resident of Long Beach even today. And Jean, you tell tell us what else you've done since you since that business. When I met you, where were you working? <laughs> Quite a while ago. Quickly. <laughs> yeah. Was I was I working for the city? Yes. She worked yeah. for the city and city hall. Yeah, I was I was one of those. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> I was one of those. I worked for the city. And you also, she's also been um, chairman of the Housing Authority Board and Now you're senior telling a little too much, Karen. No, I'm <laughs> not. No, I'm not. You've done, my point is she's a woman of all trades, backgrounds, volunteered her time as well. And you're a community activist. Community You've activist. You've been involved for years and years. But yeah. Oh, sorry. That's why I have this piece of right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I've, been, I've been doing that. And again, I'm still very blessed uh, to be able to be in those positions. Yes. Uh, I think I did a fairly good job. Yes, you did. But I'm now officially retired. Only here because Karen has to be. Don't be afraid to toot your own horn. That's out of your own Yes, you deserve it. Okay. Dale? More Any Any questions? More Later. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to do questions oh. later. Okay? That's why I'm uh, like this. Yeah, uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> Representing Smorax, I was born here in Long Beach, in the Long Beach Hospital, a very long time ago. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background about the story, so the family. Ida Smorak was born in Russia in 1891. She came to New York and she had three boys. The oldest was Nathan, then there was my father Irving Smorak, and then there was the baby, who they, his name was Ephraim, but they called him Babe. She started. Do you want to stand up? Because a couple of these ladies came here. Do you feel like standing up, or do you need to sit? Oh, no. I, I don't up. have a cane yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> 
Can you hear me? Yes. 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 She came here in the 30s and she started selling wares. She went from house to house with buttons and zippers and fabrics. And um, when the war broke out, she kept a book of credit. And she would go to each house and help families if they needed dish towels or towels. And she kept a record of all of that. And then when the war uh, was, she would go around and collect the money as people could afford to pay her. She opened up a very small store on Georgia Avenue in the West End, which most people don't remember. And actually, I don't really remember it either. <laughs> From there, she moved to East Park Avenue and opened up a dry goods store. The dry goods store was called Smorax Dry Good. It was a small store, something similar to the pictures that I passed around. That was like the old Park Avenue. And in that store, the merchandise was just piled up to the ceiling. And anybody who went in there would just watch then climb up on the ladders <laughs> to get down, whether it was jeans or shirts. And they stayed there. I can't give you the exact date, but I know that somewhere in the 50s, they moved. Oh, and they also had the Parkers there, which was a very big thing for high school students. So they sold a lot of the winter parkers. And then they moved on to a bigger store on the same block. And then it became Smorax. When the war had come, broke out in World War II, she had only her oldest son that she could keep with her. And my father who was in the University of Alabama on a, football, on a sports scholarship. And my uncle Babe, they went to war. So when they came out of the war, my father went into the business, and Babe became a bartender. So that was the story of the boys. In the Smorax store, we had people working there. It was a much bigger store. They sold women's clothes, men's clothes, boys' clothes back in the 50s, you know, and 40s. We weren't allowed to wear jeans to school, so they sold a lot of chinos and button-down shirts and a lot of men's clothing as well. After, they also sold the ladies' clothing. And We've had a lot of people working in the store through the years. Uh, I'm going to just name a few in case um, you might know any of them. There was um, Artie Weiss, a young man named Carlos, David Brown, Andy Hells, whose father was a uh, Plumber in Long Beach. I don't know, maybe you oh, know him. Held is still in business. Uh, oh, yeah. Willie Levy, and also Alfredo Levine, who worked for my father, who happens to be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy Crystal. <laughs> and my father used to tease him mercifully. <laughs> Why are you going to drama classes? Why, you know, and he adored him. So everybody that worked in the store really enjoyed it. I worked in the store. Matt's daughter worked in the store. My brother Alan Smorak worked in the store. Maybe some of you knew Alan. Um, and we all just got our education from there. Um, eventually, in the, eight, in the 80s, 
a little before the 80s, the block itself wanted to uh, change and bring in a big supermarket. So the stores were, um, were put under um, eminent domain and they had to sell their stores. But on the block itself, I'm going to just read off a lot of stores that maybe some names will bring a, a ring a bell to you. This is, there was Dunn's Toy Store in the 50s. There was Nat's Delicatessen. There was um, Schechter's Malta Shop. Malted shop. Hmm. There was, um, they sold Malta's ice cream sodas, candies sandwiches. There was King Kong, which was a fruit and vegetable store, mm -hmm. and also sold Christmas trees on Christmas. <laughs> um, there was Dan and Shoes, Faden's Children's Clothing, Park East Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a store named Doris Tenza, mm -hmm. who catered to women in their dresses. Um, there was Pincus, the appetizing store. Mattel's, the bakery. And being that my father was a West End boy, and always reminded us, he did go down to Model Bakery many times <laughs> instead of going to the tell, which was right on the block. But he did do both. Um, there was also, I was just asking Jean if she remembered, and, they, and then she did. There was a bar called Rex Bar and Grill. And they were there in the 50s. But in the back, if you went through to the back, you could get pizza. And that was the first pizza place in really Long Beach before Gino's. But we weren't allowed to drink. Um, and after that, um, I'm just trying to say, there was Marin's Delicatessen, also known as the Hebrew National. Tilbin's Records, I don't know if any of you remember that. That was on that block? Yeah, you remember, right? Yeah. On that block? Yes. Oh, it was, it was a very little record, record store before yeah. uh, Sedlick yeah. moved okay. across the street. street. Right. Yes. So, and uh, yeah. there was Dilbert's Supermarket, if you remember. But there was, that's the store actually that my dad had taken over. And then after they had that for a while, they broke through and bought S and W meet me. So that's the story of Smorax. Wow. So okay. if you have any questions after, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay. How you doing? Well, my family goes back in this town a long time ago. My, I think my grandmother, they lived in Brooklyn, and I think they moved here in the 30s. I know my uncle was born, I don't know if he was born here, but he went to, to high school here. And he's the only one who never stayed here. He left. He disappeared. But then my father was working, he, you know, after the war, he was in the army, he was working in uh, a and in Rockaway. And then he decided to open up, I think, right after the war, his own store on, on between Ohio and Nevada, was the old store with apartments up above. And um, that had a big fire, I think, in 65 or 66. I'm not sure what. And then we built the new store, where it is now, on Illinois and Ohio, in 68. And, you know, been there ever since, until Hurricane Sandy, under our family control, when my brother and I just had enough after Sandy, it would have been millions of dollars to, uh, to, re to, to rebuild the business, and we said we had enough of that. And, you know, we made it go bye-bye. But, um, but it was great living in town. I, it's, the, the whole problem is the whole business world has changed. Like, when you're talking about those little stores, now those stores don't exist anymore. Supermarkets like mine don't exist anymore. I have old friends of mine and customers who come in now, they said they hate that place, it's not the same, and then the new people don't know the difference, so it's all fine for them.
But um, no, but Long Beach is a great town. The West End is a great place. It looks a lot different now. That's that's for sure. And um, you know, but it's like my uncle owned Echo. Where everybody knows who Echo is. My other uncle was Dr. Koff next to the big house by the Bagel Club. And um, you know, and then so after we sold the business, I didn't know what to do. So we. Um, I brought, we, I got into a little development. We built the building at 670 Long Beach Road, and we brought a company called Planet Payment there. Mm -hmm. They were probably, I think, one of the first public companies in Long Beach, and then they sold out. Then we, we founded Bridgeworks across the street, and then we brought another company that was a public company, Ipsity, to 670, and now they moved to Colorado. But, <laughs> But so far, all is good, you know, a little entrepreneurship, trying to keep the town. But just everything has changed, and I'm not so sure it's for the better, but that's, you know, everybody could decide. It's just getting, it's getting a bit crazy up here. And, uh, what about the East End store? When did oh, you open the East End? My father, that was before me. In the, oh, I think yeah, in the 60s, he was partners with um, the guy who had it before, I think with Jason's Jason. father. He no, associated Murray. in the East End oh. for a little while, and then he sold out. That was Jason before I came back. Jason Murray. Yeah. Jason Murray. Okay. Yeah. No, Jason, his father was Murray. Oh, his father was Murray. Oh, his father was Murray. Oh, 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 okay. No, your name. Okay. Cough. Cough. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. okay. Very good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any questions later on? Well, we'll get some later. Well, my name's uh, Fred Ostendorf, and uh, no, I thank the... Uh, the uh, Historical Society for giving us the opportunity to say something, and uh, good or bad. And uh, <laughs> I guess I'll talk about way back when. Uh, my father came to this country in uh, 1926, and he headed straight for Long Beach. He must have heard something through the grapevine that it was good for a bricklayer, and it was. It was very good. It was Boomtown, Boomtown, USA. They were making these mansions like this all over town, you know. So there's plenty of work. So immediately he fell into work and doing okay. Then he got a partner by the name of Hecke. Do you remember him? Oh, Harry Hecke? Harry Hecke? And, yes. uh, oh, yeah. Harry yeah. Oh. And uh, they worked, uh, they had a thriving business. And uh, they did a lot of work for White Little, who was a local uh, development down west, made a lot of houses. And um, then uh, he met my mother at night school, learning English. And uh, in time, he married her, and uh, so they were a couple. And she worked at a little bakery down on uh, uh, Wyoming Avenue called Stamps in those days, a German bakery. She was a counter girl. So um, they got married, and uh, they were doing well, saving money. And uh, then the Depression hit. 1929 came, and the market dropped, and everything stopped. Everything stopped dead. There was no work at all. Nobody was building at all. And uh, so they struggled along for about a year and a half, and then finally my father said, "Listen, we got to work. We got to make some money. We got to, we got to do something." And uh, there's a bakery for sale on Connecticut Avenue called uh, East End Bakery, uh, West End Bakery. And uh, why don't we buy that and make a go of it? We have some money saved. We can do it. So they did that, and they made a go of it. Wow. And he got another baker. They work side by side, and you learn to visit, you know. Wow. Of course, still being a bricklayer, he make a, <laughs> he make a pound cake like a brick. <laughs> but, uh, so he, he got through the uh, depression, and uh, meanwhile, my mother's brother came over from Germany, and so they took him into the bakery to work, and then they made him a partner, and uh, and then uh, he got married, and then he was had a son coming. And um, now we had two families trying to live off one bakery. So one, one day my father says, he says, listen, there's plenty of business in Long Beach. I'll give you, I'll sell you this, my part of the business, you pay me off in time, and uh, I'll open another bakery in the center of town, which he did, oh, a place wow. called Pastry Bakers, which is uh, that confectionery store uh, right opposite City Hall, hmm. or a convenience store, that's what it is. And uh, that's where we located. And in those days, uh, he was successful, and uh, but then he had a fire, and uh, the fire bankrupted him, and uh, he was out of work, but then he bankrupted, you know. But at that, at that time, the war had started, so there was a work immediately over as a carpenter over and making PT boats over in Freeport. Mm -hmm. So he got a job there working at 50 cents an hour, 
which when he jumped up to about a dollar an hour in no time. And then he got a job with Bethlehem Steel in uh, New York Harbor. And then they worked on the big boats and converting them and doing things. One of the boats he worked on was the uh, Queen Mary. They had converted to a troop transport. Mm. They ripped out all the uh, salons they had, and all the fancy cocktail lounges. They ripped them all out and put in bunks, 4,000 bunks. Wow. They put in huge food lockers, you know. And uh, it served its purpose in the war. So then when the war ended, he got back into contracting. And uh, he did good. And, um, and I started working with him part time. I was still in school. I just work on summons, I'd work with them, and then holidays, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, I'd work with them. And uh, I learned the business that way. And uh, so then in time, in time, uh, he decided in 51, he, uh, he said, I'm going to, I'm going out and uh, I'm going to do some uh, work out in, uh, in uh, out, yeah, out east. Uh, and uh, so he did that. He left the business. And, uh, I took it over. And I took it over with my brother and uh, John Stein. He was my partner. And uh, we were in business for 40 years, doing this and that all over town. So we did a lot of construction work around town, a lot. And uh, wherever I go, I could see something. We had our handiwork. You know? <laughs> and, uh, it's like memorabilia when I walk around town. <laughs> I did that. We did that. And, uh, wow. There was someone so there, you know? It's, it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, I'm a lucky guy, and a lucky guy in other steps. And uh, so, uh, there were a lot of things happened when we were in business, and uh, we worked, uh, we made the, uh, the quarters for uh, the New York Rangers when uh, Long Beach was their home base. Mm -hmm. We put in their locker rooms, their, uh, their passageways to the ice skating rink, and uh, Angel Francis's office, you know, that was kind of fun. About two months work, worth of work. We met all the guys that kept coming in every day, checking on the work. That was kind of a fun experience. And uh, for a lot of people, the business changed through the years. We first started with like a lot of masonry work. And uh, kind, of, kind of the Bella Boys were our competitors at the time, which was fine. And, uh, <laughs> and then the business changed. People started moving into Long Beach all year round, particularly in the bungalows in the West. We'd have to chuck them up, straighten them out, put it in concrete piers instead of the pilings they're on. And uh, then they start to winterize them, and then we get into uh, uh, ex little extensions and the brick stoops and the porches and uh, the, the, the black walls around them. And then people started moving up east and developing things here. And then, then we got more and more into carpentry. And you get into windows and doors and siding and roofing and extensions. and uh, so it all evolved in time. It changed dramatically. And today, when we left, when we closed shop, you're into kitchens and beds. You know, <laughs> like the whole circle. You know? yeah. so that's uh, basically it. I, my brother was a great partner. And John Stein was the best. Very good people. And uh, I have no regrets. I have no regrets being in business. And uh, always is a good place. Good place for me. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Terrific. Does anyone uh, have questions? I have questions, questions or maybe a comment you want to direct to oh, yeah. your memory to yeah. one of the experiences? Go ahead. <clears throat> you made some friends along the way that were clients of yours, didn't you? Like Dr. Fear and uh, the Schumanns and got some other jobs and side jobs even after you retired, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. Like all the customers, I couldn't say no. The only problem was I didn't have a truck anymore. So. <laughs> and I just want to say, I, I've been working upstairs here in the archives, and um, I came across, every time I come across something, I was, oh, there's a picture of Schmorax that I, that I took. And we came across a picture, uh, Barry, of your Uncle Morty as a fighter pilot. Mm. And really? Yeah, the, the headline. He, he, he flew the P-57 
and over yeah. Germany, yeah. he got shot down. Oh, wow. And he was talking to the people back where he would do the home base, and he and they was and he was saying, you know, I plane shot it. He, they said, you can't make it back. You can't make it back. And he basically said, cursed at him and said, I'm right. making it back. Making and he struggled. He got the plane back and crash landed, and it was okay. Wow. wow. Yeah. So, so those kinds of things, you know, are, are to me, you know, it's and like, and, whoa. and Uncle Harold, who was from Echo, he was in oh. Pearl Harbor. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 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 Him and fellows were both there. Yeah. Right. Wow. Right. So, interesting. Yeah, it Very really is. Yes. And again, how there's so many different families and so many different <coughs> excuse me, connections Connected, to people. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, Model Bakery is, I, I just want you to know, I'm, I'm famous because of Model Bakery. <laughs> Nobody knows me except you worked in Model Bakery. That's what they said. <laughs> you worked in Model Bakery. <laughs> that's, you worked a long time. <laughs> I did. I worked a long time there. Oh, yes. was, uh, you know, I know you you worked in Model Bakery. That was my very Trading first job <laughs> in a German bakery yeah. in Maryland. And he oh was, God. oh my God. Yeah. He yeah. hooked me on right. baked goods for life. <laughs> but more important, what happened to bakers? Yeah, right. What happens is true. And the deal, I just, your, your uncle, you know, the young people that took over my uncle's bakery eventually, they folded. It's so much work. It's crazy. My parents used to work 364 days a year. One day off for Christmas. Well, we we were open 365. That was worse. That was worse. I remember you. you. You look a little different. I love the years. No, you look better. Okay, thank I you so much. I was a cashier at your store. How long ago? Like 1970, 80? I was in high school, 77. Oh, so I wasn't even there. I was away at that point. Well, my you, father you, was there. I remember your father very fast. And then you had my bookkeeper, Molly. No, but you, there was. Who was a little older. Don't you have a brother? Yeah, my brother Robbie, but he didn't get yeah. there in, unless he was there for the summers because no, he couldn't get out of school. I think I remember Robbie. And like, say, he got out of school in 78, right. so he probably was there in 79. That's me. Right. But I remember his father. You were a good employee. He did not know you. Your father was a nice man. Yes, he was. Right. And your mother was a wonderful <laughs> woman. Okay, Grace was in the uh, League of Women Voters. Yeah. And by the way, thinking about going back to that, I remember in the old store, but I was very young, I didn't remember. My mother, and I still can't believe it, they used to make homemade in the house potato salad, macaroni oh, salad, yeah, and yeah, coleslaw yeah. and sell them in the store. I'm going exactly. back in the early 60s, and it's like, how the hell, I mean, what a difference between that? today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 they opened up uh, Lindell Deli. I think that um, the mother, the grandmother, or whatever, was making the salads in the home. And then the health department came in. Oh, right. totally, 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 illi illegal. totally illegal, right? <laughs> totally illegal. Right. And it was ever since the they these But good. the best part about the health department, they come in and they complain about anything. Yeah. One fly is there, they'll complain and write you up a ticket. Right. So I asked the guy one time, I said, I have a question. What would happen if you walked into any random person's kitchen? What would happen? <laughs> Everyone would fail. Yeah. Everyone yeah. would yes. fail. Sure. I said, yeah, so you just want to raise money by us. He goes, yeah. Yeah. Not too much. They just try to raise money. Right? And, you, and your butcher was what? McCutcheon? Wait, no, McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Yeah. Yeah. John. John. John Senior. He was a good senior? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. John was a very nice guy. guy. Yes, he was. He was, he was a it was a lot of fun there for a lot of years. Yeah. Right. Going back to the Rangers, you brought up a lot of that. That was fun. Yeah. 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 And I, I just yeah. wanted to say to Dale, um, uh, uh, connections. Her, your uncle Babe, right, owns a studio lounge. If you remember that over, in, you know, and everybody goes, "That's right, that's yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. <laughs> those things." So, and and it was Nate and Irv, your dad, who had the, the clothing yes. store, right? Yes. Yeah, right, right. I went to the city in the 70s, I was a assistant building commissioner, and his contracting company, I gave him a 10. You uh, always did the job right. Yeah. You didn't have to look back. 
right. To say if something was not done. Yeah. If something's fine, it was just the way it was. You know, it was just an uh, amazing contract. Well, in Schwarz, I know, and everybody. So it's just great. You know, I'm just uh, thinking back about the Martin Bakery now. Uh, I had a friend, and uh, he came from a very poor family down west, and uh, they lived in a small apartment, and there were five young kids all about the same age. And no, anyway, he had a little. Uh, he had a little uh, newspaper route, and uh, his mother depended on him for bringing home a little change, so he have a little house money, you know. And so um, he's walking by the bakery one day, and my father's outside, and uh, my father says, "Hey, son, I'd like you to deliver the paper for me." And uh, I won't pay you with money at the end of the week, but I'll give you something just as valuable. And a little young kid in those days didn't question that, all, really. So uh, at the end of the week comes, and my father gives him this great big crab bag, and it's all full of perishable donuts and crumbs and cookies and all, all, all those great things, you know. And uh, he gives him this bag, and so he takes it home. And he comes in the front door, and the mother says, well, where's the money for Mr. Rostino? He says, he didn't give me any money, he gave me this bag. So she grabs the bag out of his hand, and she looks down at it, and she's quiet for a minute, and then she grabs him by the wrist and pulls him up to his face, and then she, with the other finger, she's wiggling at him, and she says, and you'd be very, very nice to this. I live across, I live across the street from um, Fred's partner, Stein, when we moved in, uh, John Stein and his wife. What's her first name again? Esther. 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 Esther Ropius. Beautiful. And um, they were wonderful, wonderful neighbors. And uh, my husband's a contractor builder. And he used to, you know, he used to ask John questions. And then when he met Fred, he used to talk to them all the time and get their advice because he started a business here in Long Beach. He really respected both of them. And well, Jean, I just them. wanted to ask you about who did you sell to? Because I have a vague, you know, I have a vague memory of, of the restaurant on. There was also a lunch, a uh, cleaners there. He was on the corner of Magnolia, right? Yeah. yeah. No, he was. I was. Yeah, he was on the. Yeah, I was inside. He was out on the other corner. Oh, yeah. So I sold to him. So he had. Oh, so he had more space. Oh, he oh, turned into a parking lot. He didn't continue with the restaurant though. He expanded. No, he expanded yeah. his clean. Okay, yeah, I was Wasn't just there a Chinese restaurant in there? It was. She just asked that it was. Yeah. Right. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Suey Szechuan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was the old one. Suey was there. Suey was by Bank of America. Suey was by Bank of America. Yeah. 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 Oh, Suey was small. Oh, I knew yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was a little tiny takeout place. Yes. Yeah. 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 There are hundreds and hundreds of merchants, you know. So, so we it's random. We're not trying to play any favorites or anything like that. No, we contacted just, probably twelve different merchants. Different it's been people. about three weeks, and um, trying to tie people down. Uh, we actually invited Joan Whitbread tonight. Yeah. And everybody knows Joan, especially us, of course. No, Joan. And she was not well. She couldn't come. She's going to be okay, but she just couldn't come. Um, we also contacted the McAvoys and um, Kevin and what's the other? Charlie. Charlie said that if Kevin wasn't here, he'd be here. And I called, I called several times and left messages on their machine. It's probably a hockey game. As, as, many, as many people call for the plumber and leave the message. Um, and also, Eileen, Jeannie didn't know you were related to Ponty's for your family business. So we're definitely going to do it again, and we're going to invite more merchants down the road. But it takes, you know, it takes work and contacts to get people together and get them the same date. And so we're just thrilled. We're thrilled that all of you could make it tonight. Right. And I want to make two quick announcements. Who has more questions? Go ahead. Okay. Dennis.
Dennis. Dale, um, 1962, I had my first job as a beach coordinator here. And I got my first paycheck, a dollar an hour. Mm. And where did I go? This morning. <laughs> and uh, I bought some stiletto pants. <laughs> and the most garish, mattress shirt you can imagine. Oh, yes, um, in fact, I thought they were cool when I bought them. So, yeah, they were. So, I, I didn't plan on wearing them too many times because they were. Uh, and 